Thank you, Olaf and uh, Jeremy. So, so let's step back uh, and discuss where Collectic and other tools fit in the Statistics Canada landscape, so to speak. Uh, Farah will cover the use cases in the second half of the presentation. So to provide some context, let's start by considering some recent trends and requirements. First, the trends, uh, projects are becoming larger and need to integrate data from multiple domains. We are seeing more heterogeneous data, including sensor and geospatial coming at an ever increasing speed and from a number of non-traditional sources. There is also an increasing need to obtain insight by applying uh, data science and analytics techniques under uh, the machine learning landscape. Now, the requirements. First, we need to capture metadata um, uh, to automate lifecycle management of both data and metadata. Second, we need to improve what we can probably describe as context, that is provenance, lineage, and semantics at different granularities. Uh, third, we need the ability to describe and integrate uh, different types of data structure from physical formats like JSON, parquet file, um, and also protocol buffers to flexible data organizations, um, like for instance, key value and others. And last but not least, we have to support and implement entirely new data platforms together with the broad range of technologies that come with them, like cloud virtualization, Internet of Things, and so on. So to that end, our vision can be summarized in two goals. The first goal is to have trusted and secure information that is easy to find and use. And for that, we need data management and digitalization, especially in the form of automated processes. This includes solid data governance and stewardship together with modern data infrastructure. Um, then, of course, that needs to be complemented with a well-defined trust framework and privacy protection techniques. The second half of the goal, find and use, roughly aligns with definable and accessible principles of FAIR. So you may know that FAIR is a set of high-level principles that help making data usable in a, in a broad sense, which essentially means making the, the data findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, the four principles behind FAIR. For that, we need to look particularly at three aspects, provenance and lineage, as we mentioned, semantic search and discovery, and link data frameworks to the underlying machinery that makes this work. Now, the second goal is to have timely and comprehensible information that is comparable and interoperable across domains. So this relies on the link data frameworks we mentioned before and aligns to a great extent with the interoperable and reusable FAIR principles. These frameworks, the span three major areas. Uh, the protocols, which have to do with the basic machine-to-machine -machine communication. Um, there is the structures as well, to organize the data in different ways to make it fit for use. And then also the semantics associated with those structures, which include data models and ontologies. So where we are in the, this journey. So to achieve this goal, we, we have undertaken this broad transformation and modernization process. We are transitioning from a heterogeneous collection of siloed repositories that do not interoperate. In fact, they barely talk to each other. A multitude of in-house tools implemented with no common or standardized components. A lack of data standards to facilitate integration and harmonization and lots of manual processes that create big overheads. And we're moving slowly but surely into a more kind of integrated metadata ecosystem that includes standards-based repositories that facilitate interoperability and data exchange, standards-aware, internationally tested and customizable of the shelf and open source tools to implement uh, this business transformation effectively and efficiently, standards-enabled processes and methods for data integration and concept harmonization, and finally, standards-driven automation across the board based on metadata-driven processes. So to guide us in this, this process, we have a, an enterprise framework based on a set of well-defined metadata principles, which have been informed by the common statistical data architecture developed by the UNC Modern Stats and others. First, metadata form an ecosystem. Metadata are not maintained by a centralized tool. It covers multiple domains and is stored in a variety of interacting repositories. Second, metadata have semantic consistency. Metadata are precisely defined according to a modeling framework with a set of coherent uh, naming rules. Semantic consistency is critical to integrate data and power search and discovery. Third, metadata conform to standards. This is critical for interoperability and data exchange, not to mention data integration. Fourth, metadata are actionable. Actionability and especially machine actionability is critical to drive the statistical business process effectively. Uh, fifth, metadata are managed throughout their life cycle, which includes provenance and lineage as well. Essentially, the ability to maintain and provide information about what happened to the data and where it's coming from and the metadata. 
And finally, six, metadata are used throughout the organization and throughout all processes. So this probably is the most difficult to achieve, but at least we are making progress in several key areas. Okay, so our metadata ecosystem is put together with three building blocks, standards, tools, and services. The metadata principles we just discussed are one of the main drivers behind it. The other one is FAIR. Standards here span uh, both structures and semantics. So in terms of structures, DDI and SDMX support a number of data organizations. Uh, these data organizations will be linked to data sets via data catalog metadata using stat DCAT, which is an application profile of DCAT for data portals. Now with DDI, SDMX, and also XCOS, uh, we can also define domain specific data models and vocabularies, like standardized classifications and concept schemes. Uh, we see some of, of those in, in the previous presentation. So this is key to achieve interoperability, which is based on the exchange of standardized entities with well-defined structure and semantics. Last but not least, we rely on GSIM, the generic, uh, generic statistic uh, business information model, sorry, as the conceptual blueprint behind these standards. So, okay, standards are great, but they are only useful if they can be enabled by tools. Fortunately, there are some excellent metadata tools nowadays, and we are deploying a number of them in our organization, including Collectica, to manage DDI, as you know, the SDMX ISTA toolkit for SDMX content, ARIA for code sets and classification management, and CCAN for data catalogs. These tools constitute the backbone of our metadata ecosystem and make our metadata principles truly implementable. Now, tools and standards become really powerful when managed as part of a service portfolio. So we're working closely with business partners in a specific projects, applying a use case driven approach to leverage both standards and tools, first in exploratory proof of concepts and also later on in production. This approach has proven useful in choosing the right projects and areas where to grow the ecosystem incrementally. So we mentioned key partnerships, projects, and tools. And this diagram shows some of them in the GSBPM. GSBPM stands for Generic Statistical Business Process Model and describes the business process that statistical organizations share to a large extent. The main goal here is, is breaking uh, down the innumerable silos we have across the organization. Uh, to that end, we are helping programs, program areas to standardize, not only in their own environments, but also, and more importantly, when they need to exchange data and metadata downstream across GSBPM phases and sub-processes. This is the crucial interoperability side of the story. As you can see, we are starting right from specified needs where concepts are initially defined and captured in Collectica together with survey and data holdings metadata. Eventually, we'll also include the CMX in that phase. As we get to the design phase, we start defining the variables and Collectica to capture the concepts from the previous phase. We also start defining as CMX DSDs, which stand for data structure definitions, including agreed upon code lists. It's important to note that this diagram shows only what we are starting to implement with standardized tools now is the current state. It's our uh, most recent snapshot, let's say, rather than a roadmap. So let's have now a quick look at our architecture, which is always fun. Uh, so the notions of have, uh, of metadata or data, have been around for quite some time. The idea behind them is, is that the content producers and consumers connect with each other via this data or metadata hub with governance controls and standard models applied across the board to enable effective data sharing or metadata sharing. The metadata hub is focused on driving consistent semantics and interoperability. It also facilitates unified governance across all these different tools and repositories that function in different ways and have different physical organizations and technologies. At the bottom, we have these metadata tools and repositories we discussed. That it, it, this is the persistence, provenance, and lineage management. Uh, that's where it happens. That's where we are focusing our energies right now. Once that is in place, the metadata hub will enable the integration of metadata content from all these different tools and repositories. For instance, classifications in the Xcos from area are used as value domains of variables maintaining DDI and Collectica which are also part of the data catalog metadata maintaining StatDCAT in SICAN for search and discovery, for instance. This integration is based on the notion of virtual views for sharing entities in the metadata standards best suited for a given task. A core piece of that functionality is the semantic coherent component in which content could be translated across standards on demand. From the user's point of view, the metadata hub 
will be just a single point of access for all metadata needs. So now we talk about semantic coherence, um, and this is where uh, the knowledge management is powered by a semantic infrastructure of sorts that is currently at a proof of stage, uh, proof of concept stage, sorry. So what we are implementing here is uh, that uh, the different repositories uh, fit into a triple store that functions as a hub for the three different components that you see on the picture, Sparkle endpoint, a Secant data catalog, and an elastic search engine. So this is a kind of a temporary architecture uh, that enables us to come up with these proof of concepts, and then we are going to refine it as, as we go. The triple store uh, then make those standards in sem into semantic models that represent actionable knowledge. The semantic model is essentially in the connecting network of concepts. Um, and, and RDF is one of the, the standard models to represent that, which is essentially a, a collection of triples of the form subject, predicate, object. So metadata is extracted via the APIs provided by each of the tools and then transformed with RML to a statdcat to be loaded into the triple store. RML is a mapping language that can express mapping rules between some structured formats and RDF. So this is currently implemented for statdcat and will be extended to other models, uh, supporting the SCOS, PROV, uh, and even uh, the, the full extent of the NSDMX. So by the way, I just mentioned here, like this kind of particular proof of concept and all the different components and everything we discuss and what Farah will cover next is becoming a reality thanks to countless people on both the technical and business side of StatScan, not to mention those implementing the standards and the tools we use. And on that note, I leave the floor to Farah. Thanks. Hi, everyone, and thank you so much, Flavio for that introduction. And can everyone see my screen okay? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I'm just gonna exit this and remove this. Okay, perfect. Um, so as Flavio mentioned, I'm going to be covering, oh, let me move this down. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to be covering the use cases that go along with what Flavio has just presented. Um, so there's specific metadata use cases. Um, please note that everything that we're presenting right now is not everything that we're currently, um, not everything that we're working on. Um, what's going to be presented is these are use cases that have implementation plans and concrete established partners as well. So as I go through each use case, you'll see a similar format to each page. Um, you'll see a list of our established partners to date. Uh, the mission of the use case, in most case, cases, it is a tool replacement. Uh, the standard applicable to the use case, the tool that will be used as well, and the status update on where we're at with that project. Uh, so first up is our use case in terms of classifications. Um, so the mission for this use case is to replace existing classification systems throughout the agency and to standardize this metadata in one tool, that tool being ARIA. Um, so over the past few years, the classification team has been working on the acquisition and deployment of ARIA, which is the enterprise classification management uh, platform that has been developed by Metadata Technologies North America, MTNA, as some of you know it, um, and Stats New Zealand as well. The standards that we're using within this use case are GSIM and the new Chantel model. Um, Area has been deployed at Stack Can currently, uh, and the tool is actually being used by our international accounts and trade division. Um, Right now, we're currently working on uh, migrating the classifications and concordances from the current systems, um, and Xcos and Xcos X S cause and Xcos APIs have been created, and the migration is happening right now. Um, so that's the use case that we have for classifications. Uh, next up, we have what we call our reference data as a as a service or our DAS. Um, reference data is defined by the set of permissible values used when describing the data. So that's the definition that we're using for reference data. 
And RDAS essentially ties up all the services that Flavio had previously mentioned. And what it does is it provides a single point of access to connect to reference data, such as our classifications and our code sets. The main goal for RDAS is to have a repository that can share high quality reference data for use by everyone in the agency to access. So how are we doing that? Well, one of the ways that we're doing that is ensuring that our IDs are actually um, attached to our metadata, and then we'll be able to consistently reference it through this service. Next up is our use case for aggregate data. The mission for this use case is to replace an existing aggregate metadata system, as well as its associated feeder systems. Um, the standard that we're using in this case is the Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange Standard, so SDMX. Um, and uh, over the past few years, the aggregate data team uh, has been working on the acquisition and deployment of the SDMX ISTAT toolkit in a dev environment. Uh, and to get to this point, the SDMX, uh, SDMX was actually approved at an agency level as the standard for aggregate data. From there, the first use case for SDMX was our energy data, and we're currently working on fostering a data exchange between other subject matter areas and putting their, um, uh, their data into the SDMX format. Uh, the next one we'll talk about is our data hub project. Um, or our statistical data hub project. Uh, this is gonna be a data repository comprised of multiple sources and it's being built for sharing purposes. The data that we're, um, that's being captured in the previous use cases that I've talked about, such as the data going through ARIA for the value domains and our code sets, as well as the data that's gonna go through the STMX ISTAT toolkit and through RDAS will all come together and be accessible through this data hub. Um, it's going to contain well-described data with quality, standardized metadata, reference data, as well as a reference. It'll act as a reference catalog. It will also be supporting a uh, powerful search and discovery, and therefore it'll also align with FAIR principles. And uh, our next use case we're going to look at is our microdata use case. Um, the standard that we're using is DDI as well, and the tool that we are using is Collectica. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Collectica is a suite of programs for use in documenting official statistics and specifying statistical surveys using open standards. Um, we'll be using Collectica to actually replace many existing tools and systems, such as our integrated meta database, IMDB, as some of you may know it as. Uh, and IMDB is our corporate repository of information on each of, Stack uh, on each of Statistics Canada's nearly 400 active surveys. So it houses all of our survey metadata in there, as well as some other things. The Collectica repository will become one of our corporate metadata repositories, and their APIs will be used to push and pull metadata in. Collectica Designer for us will specifically be used to document concepts, variables, questions, and data set descriptions um, while importing and generating various forms of data, documentation, and source codes. Users will automatically be loading metadata in from their various uh, data files, and they'll be able to produce weighted and unweighted frequencies from that. It's we'll also minutes. be using Collectica. Perfect, thank you. Uh, we'll also be using Collectica software development kit, their workflow services, and Collectica portal. For us, DDI is the approved standard for microdata throughout the agency. We got that approval a few years ago, and we've been working with numerous subject matter areas to review their metadata and map it to DDI with the goal of ingesting it into the Collectica repository. We've installed Collectica in our dev cloud environment, and we're almost ready to test it out with our partners. Uh, one thing that comes with this is we've been actually developing what we call our minimum metadata requirements. Um, so we've been assessing policy instruments over the past few years that pertain to microdata. Um, and the goal of this exercise is to establish what is the bare minimum metadata requirements when going into a metadata repository, um, such as the collective repository. This will allow us um, for the governance over our metadata that's going into these repositories, and it's going to provide standardized, structured, and quality metadata in return. For this use case, our goal is actually to onboard all users of microdata in the agency, and we're currently conducting various proof of concepts to see that through. 
Uh, a real time example of a use of a proof of concept for Collectica is um, for the documentation of administrative data from start to finish throughout our administrative data process. Uh, Stack, uh, Statistics Canada's administrative metadata will be housed in Collectica using the DDI standard. And as it's actually going through the generic statistical business process model or GSBPM, we'll start by capturing that meta once, metadata once it's created and reuse it throughout the various phases, data sets, and processes, as you can see by the arrows indicated on the screen. Uh, so everything's going to be reused. And our last use case that we're going to cover today is our use case on data assets. Um, we're currently working on a proof of concept to use CCAN, which is an open source data management system for powering data hubs and data portals. CCAN is going to be used to replace existing tools, um, and it will be used to manage the provenance and lineage of data assets, act as a single source of reference, and a point of access for enterprise data across different silos in the agency. The proposed standards we're using for this case, uh, use case is DCAT, DCAT AP, as well as STAT DCAT AP and GEO DCAT AP. We're in the very preliminary phase of this use case and we're still determining requirements, but we did get approval about a year ago for the use of the proposed standard I just outlined uh, to use them as the corporate standards. Um, so this use case is greatly gonna tie into the search and discovery items that Flavio previously talked about at the start of the presentation as well. Um, internally, uh, we have a lot of people to say thanks to um, for that were responsible for putting together all of these slides. Our metadata initiative at the agency has really been a large collaborative uh, agency wide effort and I just wanted to thank everyone for all of that. A lot of the use cases today are being worked on by numerous teams throughout the agency and we're all coming together to collaborate uh, on this enterprise endeavor. Um, thank you so much for having us and we look forward to providing an update on our progress at Natty and at Eddie next year.